Hello guys, I know you're waiting for another video about space and SpaceX. Your waiting is over because I have come back with another amazing topic. It's about SpaceX Raptor engine production, which takes only 7 days. So, subscribe and turn on the notification feature to see more. Let's get started. Raptor is a next generation liquid rocket engine developed by SpaceX to power the company's interplanetary transportation system that aims to establish an operational cargo and crew architecture for missions between Earth and Mars, and possibly beyond, starting in the 2020s. The dimensions of SpaceX's Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, are unprecedented in the history of spaceflight, calling for a payload mass to the surface of Mars in the range of 450 metric tons. Achieving this ambitious goal requires a massive launch vehicle with a cluster of high-powered engines, a propulsion system for operation in deep space, and a propulsive landing and ascent architecture for operation in the Martian atmosphere. All this will be realized by SpaceX's Raptor engine family. SpaceX CEO and chief designer Elon Musk set his goals to Mars from the very beginnings of the company in 2002. Initially a stepwise process beginning with uncrewed flights of the small Falcon 1 before upgrading to the commercial missions with the larger Falcon 9 to be followed by crew flights to near-Earth space and heavy lift missions of the Falcon Heavy, including the first precursor missions to Mars. However, missions to explore and settle on Mars will require a much more powerful rocket, with several times the thrust of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Raptor represents a family of highly reusable methane-fueled stage combustion engines that will power SpaceX's super heavy lift launch vehicles for the exploration and colonization of Mars. According to Musk, ITS will incorporate a high degree of reusability, broadening the technologies pioneered by the Falcon 9 rocket and its reusable first stage. Raptor, first presented in 2009, started out as a low-priority project to develop a cryogenic upper-stage engine powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. By 2012, SpaceX had shifted directions in the planned propulsion architecture and Raptor's role was brought in to become the company's engine of choice for a large vehicle capable of transporting humans to Mars and beyond. Raptor Specifications The SpaceX Raptor is a cryogenic stage combustion rocket engine intended to power the high-performance low and upper stages for the interplanetary transport system. It has more than three times the thrust of SpaceX's Merlin 1D engines propelling the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and steps away from a kerosene-based propellant. Raptor consumes a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen in a full-flow staged combustion cycle. The highly reusable engine makes use of concepts first demonstrated on the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, including deep cryogenics, cooled below their boiling point to increase their density and thus load the limit tank volume with a greater mass of propellant. Like SpaceX's Merlin engines, at least two versions of Raptor will be available one for use on the first stage booster of the ITS launch vehicle, and one optimized for operation in vacuum for operation outside Earth's atmosphere for the interplanetary insertion and in the ambient Martian atmosphere for retro propulsion ahead of landing. Raptor's design was revealed in September 2016 during an address given by Elon Musk at the International Astronomical Congress outlining SpaceX's Mars transport architecture. Full flow stage combustion cycle. SpaceX's Raptor employs a full-flow stage combustion cycle, a variation of closed-cycle engine that is designed to create a more benign environment within the engine plumbing, an important aspect for reusability and also provides higher efficiency than the open-cycle engines previously developed by SpaceX. In a full-flow engine, two separate turbines, one oxygen-rich and one fuel-rich, are responsible for driving the respective fuel and oxidizer turbo pumps. The LDX turbine is driven by high-pressure gas generated by combusting nearly 100% of the oxidizer flow with a fraction of the fuel flow in an oxidizer-rich preburner. The fuel side uses the full fuel flow with a small fraction of oxidizer to generate the preburner gas that drives the fuel turbine. Raptor employs boost pumps on both the fuel and oxidizer sides that operate at lower speeds than the main pumps and creates an engine inlet pressure sufficient for the operation of the turbo pumps. Typically, boost pumps are driven by tap-off gas from the main pumps, but the exact design used by the Raptor has not been publicly shared. Raptor employs a regenerative cooling system 
routing clean methane fuel from the turbine through the engine chambers and nozzle heat exchangers before reaching the preburner and turbine. By the time both propellant components reach the engine injector, they are completely in the gas phase. The full flow engine design has a number of advantages over typical staged combustion engines. First and foremost, a higher performance, but also factoring in reliability and reuse considerations. Higher performance is achieved by injecting the propellants into the combustion chamber in a gaseous phase, creating a more rapid reaction. The use of separate turbines for the fuel and oxidizer turbo pump reduces overall turbine power compared to a single shaft turbo pump design where one turbine has to drive both pumps. Also, having the entire propellant flow pass through the turbines eases their cooling and creates a manageable thermal environment. Separate LOX slash CH4 pumping equipment eliminates the high pressure fuel oxidizer interseal, which is a known failure point of traditional engine designs. The full flow scheme also creates a more benign environment for the engine plumbing than other designs, increasing the lifespan of the power units for reuse on many flights. Furthermore, the full flow cycle provides the option of easily integrating an autogenous tank pressurization system, which would eliminate the need for a helium pressurization system, which undoubtedly caused many headaches at SpaceX during the teething issues encountered by the Falcon 9. In the IAC 2016 presentation, Musk specifically highlighted the autogenous pressurization system for the ITS booster and spaceship slash tanker to eliminate the high pressure helium system. Fuel tank pressurization can be achieved through the use of gas from the fuel line after leaving the regenerative cooling circuit, while oxidizer tank pressurant can be obtained from the turbo pump discharge, however, requiring an additional heat exchanger on one of the preburners. Raptor is the first methane LOX full flow stage combustion engine to be tested. Only two previous full flow designs proceeded into engine testing. The hypergolic fueled RD270, developed by Russian engine designer Energomash in the 1960s, and tested 27 times with the desired thrust setting of 6,270 kilonewtons and the joint NASA Air Force integrated powerhead demonstrator, which was run in the 90s and early 2000s to develop a full flow hydrogen engine. The Raptor's chamber pressure of 300 bar is the highest among all active launch vehicle engines. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you liked the video. If so, subscribe and share it with your friends. Also, turn on the notification feature to keep you updated with the latest space and SpaceX news. Thanks for watching. See you next time.